Greetings. Today I'd like to tie in some of the things I said in my video about non-urgency into modern American politics, specifically into the so-called presidential race, which of course has already begun in earnest, many candidates supposedly. And one of the things I want to stress is that at this point in time, and notice my neologism, uh, clownsmanship, this is, in, of course, in the stead of statesmanship, that almost no one in his right mind these days could possibly take modern American politics, or politics in general, but specifically modern American politics, and more specifically, modern American presidential politics seriously. I mean, look at the way the people behave, and look at the way they are advertised on media. It's absolutely absurd. Now, in talking about absurdity, I'm, I'm not really talking about political lampooning or satire or anything along those lines. Those kinds of things have been around forever. You can look at or read some of Cicero's speeches against Catalina way back when, over 2,000 years ago, and it's full of art, if you will, and rhetoric and many devices that are at the very least akin to satire and just making his opponent look bad. It's nothing new. But if you recall some of the things I mentioned in my previous video on non-urgency, I talked about the nature of modern civilization, how everything has been bent and restructured along the lines of you know, entertainment. And I think politics, particularly modern American politics, is no exception. In fact, in this regard, it, it very much fits into this model. Look at the way the debates are structured. Look at the way people are discussing these things. And look at how the clowns, and I can only call them clowns, exercise and clownsmanship, are interacting with each other. It's all for the sake of entertainment. Now, if we rewind a bit, a couple of decades, the presidency, whatever its flaws as a position, was something to be taken more seriously. Debates seem to be more serious. The entertainment effect just was not as strong. And of course, a lot of this has to do with the internet, perhaps even most of it. The way the current media spins the, the wheel and gives you a certain narrative. I mean, these all play into it, but just look at the buffoonery involved and no one can take this seriously. Now, of course, people say, well, the reason why people don't vote and don't get involved in politics is because their vote doesn't make a difference. I don't think many people take the time to take that statement apart. What does that mean, that their vote doesn't make a difference? Well, if your priorities in life are various things that ultimately end up in just some form of homeostasis, you know, playing on your Xbox, uh, keeping your job, eating, shitting, sleeping, fucking occasionally, then you're right. Your vote probably isn't going to make a huge difference either way unless you're not particularly motivated to be politically involved. When people say, you know, the average person's vote doesn't matter, that's absolutely true considering that homeostasis of the sort that I described is the kind of thing that the average person wants. And thus, there's no motivation to get involved in politics, presidential or otherwise. It's only for people who want to, quote-unquote, change the world. And these aren't the majority of people, of course. Most people just want their homeostasis. They want their, their uh, whatever they're accustomed to, the basic amenities of life. Fucking, food, shitting, Xbox, whatever. <clears throat> More is not required. And so in saying that their vote doesn't make a difference or wouldn't make a difference, uh, these people are absolutely right in claiming that. And more importantly, why should they care about the vote for the president or, or senator or whatever if that vote has no effect on what they desire in life, which is just their own form of homeostasis? Of course, part of the homeostasis is the modern, I guess, entertainment complex. Uh, it's not really an industrial complex, although perhaps it is. Well, we can call it the modern industrial entertainment complex, but this entertainment complex 
<clears throat> which you can find on YouTube, on television, it's everywhere, this kind of feeds into it. You know, the nice homeostatic uh, state of mind and uh, point in life that we can all enjoy. And this leads us then to the question of, you know, what do we really want from presidential candidates? And for me, and I think for the majority of people, what we can all agree on is we don't really want a whole lot. As long as our homeostasis is pre preserved and we have the basic necessities and the basic amenities that we want, it just doesn't matter either way. And if I were to be frank, I would say that the only thing I hope or expect from a president is not to start World War III and not do anything that would entirely crash the economy, although uh, central banks would be largely responsible for that. Not much more than that. I am a partisan. I have no horse in the race of specific uh, parties, Democratic, Republican. I, I think in as much as when I say the politics are all, uh, politicians are all the same, I mean that none of the specific things they do really have an effect on the kind of homeostasis that we want to have in our lives and enjoy. It's not that they don't have different ideas about where the country could go or different ideas about uh, various issues such as abortion or freedom of speech or gun control or whatever. Some of these views are quite different. It's just that none of these things, specifically these issues, has a huge effect on modern, the modern homeostatic life. So, you know, why bother? And I think this is something that people just don't take into account. And if you listen to some of the things that people talk about, I mean, this woman, <laughs> former uh, CEO of Hewlett Packard, Carly uh, Fiorina, who apparently uh, claimed that she would, her uh, foreign policy would be very aggressive and she would establish a military presence in the Baltic Peninsula and so on. And I mean, <clears throat> this is just ass hattery. This is clownery. No, no one can take this seriously. Uh, and a person like this would not be a good candidate for president. And, and, and like I said, I don't, I don't think these things, these statements that she makes, I don't think the statements that either Carly Farina makes, uh, the statements that uh, Donald Trump makes, that these are, are, are statements that can be taken seriously. They're, they're made for entertainment value. They're made to sort of just keep, keep this thing going. And democratically, we have uh, some rather extreme people, such as Bernie Sanders, who is super, super left-wing. I don't really agree with 80 to 90% of what he's talking about. He doesn't have a chance in hell. In all likelihood, we're going to get Hillary Clinton. Is Hillary Clinton a particularly good candidate? Well, no. I don't agree with a lot of her policies. I don't agree with a lot of things she's, she thinks. She's extremely gynocentric. All these things. However, if she doesn't cause World War III and do something that would lead the central banks to mucking up the economy to the point where my life became so unstable that it would become intolerable, I don't really care. By and large, I don't really care. There are other things in outside of the realm of politics that affect me a great deal more. Uh, I mean, I would argue that the things and the policies that the IRS institute uh, that have nothing to do with the president per se, and what the IRS does has a much more uh, profound effect on me and other people uh, in, the, in the country of the United States, as well as particularly abroad, considering that the United States has a double tax that very few, very few countries have. This, this has much more of an effect on me than elected political officials and a much more a greater effect on other people as well. So really, it sounds like resignation, but it's not. As long as we can get someone to not start World War III, I think we're, we're good. <laughs> and that's not a whole lot to ask, not really, at least. And honestly, it doesn't mean that I like these people, um, but you know, do I think Barack Obama is a great president? Absolutely not. I don't, I don't really care for him, but he hasn't started World War III yet. Yeah, he's made a muck of some things, but it hasn't affected me directly. And I think when it comes to modern American politics, this is all we can really hope for. And 
this notion of, you know, your vote doesn't matter. Of course it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the porn you're watching, probably not, or the girl that you're fucking, or the meal that you want, or the the PlayStation exclusive game that you want to play, or, you know, the, the traffic that's going to make you late for work. I mean, none of these things have an effect, or rather a relationship with the political officials that you elect. Not really. So, who really cares? Let's just hope that whoever gets elected is not insane, uh, does not try to start World War III, is, I guess, moderate for that sake, in the sense that is not interested in promoting more war, but as far as it doesn't affect the homeostatic nature of, of our lives, whatever that individual homeostasis might be, who really cares? Let's be honest. Do we really, I mean, yes, people make a big deal about things and they say this presidential candidate is horrible and blah, 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 blah. But if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of the issues people rail against and, and, and rave about really don't affect them personally. It's just to sort of put on political airs. And certainly that's the case in modern, modern media and modern television and YouTube. And look at the Young Turks always trying to stir up stuff. I mean, yes, technically they're progressives, but... You know, they're just doing it for entertainment value and to uh, get those uh, that click ad revenue. And the same could be said for you know, Fox News airing these things and what have you. It's all just a bunch of bullshit. The term gravitas, which originally comes from Latin, obviously, used to be able to be applied to the office of the presidency and certain candidates and certain occupants of the Oval Office. That has not been applicable for a very long time. And the further we move away from the quote-unquote good old days and the more we move into the modern era of pure entertainment and pure homeostatic pleasure, the less we're going to care about this stuff and the less we're going to be in a position to expect any candidate with any notion of or semblance of gravitas. I mean, who cares? Most people don't even know what the word means figuratively, literally, or otherwise, it's irrelevant because they can keep on eating their hot dogs, fucking their girl, and playing their PlayStation 4 exclusives. Now, I wanted to have, I wanted to mention this because I wanted to have a frank discussion on the nature of modern American politics, and that's what it comes down to. People will actually believe that electing politician X is going to change something and that the parties are dramatically different well, for one thing, I mean, obviously, all the parties are the major part Democrat and Republican. They're they're involved in big business, and they really don't. Just, I mean, they have distinct policies in a sense, but they're all being funded by uh, powers elsewhere. But I, I find it very difficult to believe in modern in modern America that people would actually believe that electing an official is going to have some great impact on, on their own individual lives. You know, I think it's probably the people talking about that are just doing it for the sake of promulgating their own entertainment value. I don't know. I don't think anyone, any American in his right mind, actually takes this stuff seriously. I mean, do you take Carly Fiorina seriously, Jeb Bush, Huckabee, Lim Lindsey Graham, Donald Trump, Rand Paul, mm, I guess he's okay. He's kind of a semi-serious politician, but let's be honest, unlikely to uh, to be elected. And he's a pale shadow of his father in any event. And then democratically, we have people like Hillary Clinton, uh, Lincoln Chaffee, Martin O'Malley, Bernie Sanders, and Jim Webb. Not to be taken too seriously. Let's just hope that none of these people uh, start World War III. That's that's my wish, and that the, the central banks don't crash the economy and everything continues in a more or less homeostatic manner that doesn't affect our lives too dramatically. And I think most of you and most people out there can echo that sentiment. Uh, I think we're well past the, the idealism that might have characterized our youth and policies and politics and what's right and economic policies and blah, blah, blah. No. The reality is we just want to keep have our lives keep on going as they have been without too much interruption and without too much harm. And to that end, it really doesn't matter who you're going to elect as long as they don't blow the world up. 
Everyone, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll check you guys out later. Bye-bye.